Do you want to or need to create a singing-based curriculum for your school, class or club? Maybe you've done some Kodai training but have been left hugely motivated but not quite knowing where to start. Well, today I'm going to walk you through some of the first planning tasks you'll need to do to create your own Kodai curriculum and one that works for you. So, an ideal Kodai music curriculum will take a continuous path through many musical elements and skills, each lesson progressing threads from previous lessons at the same time as preparing threads that will stretch into the future. However, planning this infinite path hurts my brain, so unless you're a superhuman, we need to break it up into sections to make the planning possible. So in the UK, we have an average half-term length of about six weeks. So let's start there. Which high-level objectives shall we cover in each half-term? And when I say high-level objective, let's be clear on what we're not talking about. I'm not talking about links to a topic. We're not going to be creating a high-quality and progressive music curriculum by handcuffing ourselves to the rainforest or World War II. I'm not talking about class sets of a particular instrument. The Kodai approach uses instruments for sure, but not to teach things that can be taught faster, more effectively, more progressively and more enjoyably than through singing. I'm not talking about preparing for a performance or an event. If there are shows coming up in your school, that's great. I love working with my choir and I think whole school singing is essential, but don't replace our music curriculum with general ensemble singing and expect to see progression and understanding in musical skills or literacy. So what am I talking about? Good high-level objectives for beginner musicians have these seven qualities. Number one, they are a single musical element. Number two, they exist in all music. Number three, they are really specific. Number four, they can be easily explained in just one or two sentences. Number five, they have clearly defined prerequisites or no prerequisites at all. Number six, they have a clear path to the next step. And number seven, they can exist alongside the practice and preparation of other objectives. So we're going to take you on a journey with Clara to help you decide your own high-level objectives. Clara is a primary school teacher and newly appointed music lead who would like to have a progressive singing-based curriculum in her school. Clara doesn't want to get overwhelmed, so she sensibly decided to start with just the first year. She can roll that out to early years foundation stage and year one, and maybe even year two in September. But where to start? Well, Clara loves mind mapping, so she starts by writing down as many musical ideas as possible. How many can you think of? Let rip, get everything down on paper. So grab a piece of paper and let's write down some ideas. Here are just some examples. We've got beat, rhythm, scales, pitch, high, low, clefs, crotchets, quavers, key signatures, texture, timbre, phrasing, form, time signatures, Italian terms, swing, harmony, chords, ostinato, singing, instruments, forte, loud, piano, soft, crescendo, repeats, composition, improvisation, sight reading, unison, polyphony, composers, classical music, folk music, playground songs, listening, jazz, bars, bar lines, modulation, orchestra, opera, musicals, pop music, ukuleles, keyboard, percussion, duets, tempo, sharps, flats, minor, major, syncopation. Oh my goodness, there's just so many. You could just get carried away, fill a whole page. But let's group them into some rough categories. This is an exercise, not a definition. I'm just trying to roughly put them into different sections so that we can kind of make sense of them. So let's have the first section as time. So under the category of time, we could have beat, rhythm, crotchets and quavers, time signatures, maybe swing, bars and bar lines, tempo, syncopation, repeats and form perhaps could be in time as well. Let's have a category of pitch. So under pitch, we could have scales, clefs, key signatures, Harmony, chords, modulation, sharps and flats, major and minor. Under parts, we could have harmony, ostinato, unison, polyphony, duets. We probably need to have a category of styles so that we can cover things like composers, classical music, folk music, playground songs, jazz, orchestra, opera, musicals, pop music and texture as well perhaps. Under performance, we could have forte, loud, piano, soft, crescendo, and other Italian terms. 
and under instruments, singing, ukulele, keyboard, percussion, anything else that you can think of that you use in the classroom. So within each of those categories, we're going to try and identify the term that we think comes first. Are any of them prerequisites of the others? So let's look at time. We had beat, rhythm, crotchets and quavers, time signatures, well, time signatures, swing, bar lines and bars and things. None of that makes any sense without beat. And actually, rhythm is only how the sounds are split into long and short sounds in relation to the beat. So beat is going to be our prerequisite. Have we got a prerequisite? I can't say that word. Have we got a prerequisite for beat? Not exactly musically, but we've certainly got lots of activities that would come before talking or working particularly on beat. So we're going to come to that later. Let's look at the pitch category. So we had scales, clefs, key signatures, harmony, chords. But actually, the very first thing that we need to have in pitch is an understanding of high and low. Is there anything that's a prerequisite to high and low? No, but high and low understanding is definitely a prerequisite to all those other things in our pitch category. So then parts, we've got harmony, ostinato, unison, polyphony, duets. Which of those do you think comes first? I think we'll all agree that unison has got to come before polyphony, for example. Styles. Composers, classical music, folk music, playground songs, jazz, orchestra. Well, in a Kadai environment, we use children's folk music, which is actually playground songs. So we're going to take the songs that the children will sing in the playground. It's a shame these days that they don't sing as many as they used to because they we, we would use the ones that they were using themselves and extract the musical elements from there. But we have a slightly different responsibility now that we're going to teach them those playground songs and then do the extraction because they don't tend to use them as much in the playground as they did in decades gone by. So hold that thought, preparing those playground songs is going to be a job. Performance, forte, loud, piano, soft, crescendo and all the Italian terms. Well, we're not going to be sticking those Italian terms in as a prerequisite, are we? But I think that having loud and soft sounds would come first before any kind of crescendo. And then instruments. Singing, ukulele, keyboard, percussion. Which of those comes first? Well, do you know what? Percussion, untuned percussion you could use early on, but I think you know what I'm going to say. I'm going to say singing. Singing is the easiest, cheapest and most effective way to teach musical skills and musical literacy because it is internal to our bodies. We we are the singing. We don't have to do something to something else. It, it is there. Every child's got it. We don't have to get all the equipment out and put it away again. There's no budget required. I don't think that anybody who's listening to my podcast ought to be arguing that singing is not the best way to start. So we now have six clear starting points. Beat, high and low, unison, playground songs, loud and soft, and singing. Which of them meet our criteria? Do you remember our seven criteria? Number one was they are a single musical element. Number two, exist in all music. Number three, really specific. Number four, can be easily explained. Number five, have clearly defined prerequisites, or in our case, we've established that they have no prerequisites. Number six, have a clear path to the next step. And number seven, they exist alongside the practice and preparation of other objectives. Well, I think that beat, high and low pitch and loud and soft performance fit our seven criteria. The other three, singing, playground songs and unison, are better suited to the delivery of the curriculum and they can be utilised throughout every lesson. They're not really as specific and as easily explained as the other three. So one of the criteria is to have a clear path to the next step. So if we take beat, for example, even though our task today was to get the first step, we want to make sure we know where it's going. So for our time category, we're starting with beat, but it's going to lead to rhythm. And when we do do rhythm, we'll be starting with just the idea of long and short sounds. 
The pitch category starts with high and low. That's going to lead to the introduction of solfa. And for me, I'll be starting with so and me, but a subject for a later podcast on where we start and which tone set we start with, because different people have different opinions on that. And then for the performance category, we started with loud and soft singing, but the next one probably would be a crescendo. I think that's too much developmentally for little ones. They can do soft and they can do loud, but they're not very good at controlling in between at that point. So crescendo is going to be pushed out a little bit later. So we've got beat, high and low, loud and soft, followed shortly by rhythm and the introduction of solfa. So we've got to work out which order to do them in. Well, if you know anything about Kodai, it's all about preparation, presentation, and then practice. So before we can present one of our new objectives, we need to have really thoroughly prepared the repertoire first. So it might be that you actually spend your first module, your first half term, building up the repertoire you're going to be using in the future modules, in the future terms. Also, do you remember I talked about beat and how there's no musical prerequisite prerequisites, goodness me, prerequisites for beat, but there's certainly a lot of developmental prerequisites. So movement, feeling the beat, doing actions to the beat, walking to the beat, all sorts of things that we need to do before we can start making the idea of beat conscious. So again, in that very first half term, that very first module, you could be building up your repertoire and getting started on those physical activities that are going to lead us towards the exploration of beat. And similarly, the high and low pitch is going to be benefited. In fact, it's essential that you've done lots of movement, moving high and low without talking about it, without making it conscious, just in the background with the actions to your games, maybe using some lycra to um, prepare that. So that first term could be a preparation term. And for me, I think that it's also a term that gets the children used to singing. So my first term is going to be exploring voice types, focusing on using a speaking voice for rhymes and a singing voice for songs. And that is a really good objective for that first term. And in the background, we're also building up repertoire and physical actions that are going to help support our objectives of our future terms. The next thing to think about is which of those activities are not exactly the easiest, but which ones will need more preparation than others. And for me, I think that beat is one we can do quite early. I think that pitch awareness is something that takes longer to develop. So if we do beat before we do the high and low pitch, then we can use the beat module to continue to prepare that high and low concept. So I'm going to go with a term of singing a term of beat. Do I want even longer to sort out that pitch awareness? Maybe. Let's throw in a term of loud and soft and then finally a term of high and low. We can follow that high and low term with rhythm and then we can follow that rhythm term with solfa. And those six half terms would be the most that you can fit in in one year. You might decide that actually five half terms of objective learning is sufficient, giving a little bit of breathing space for school shows, nativities, settling in if they're in early years, sports days and things like that. So just to give yourself a little bit more breathing space and possibly for early years because of the time it takes them to settle in. And I know some schools do a staged start where they don't do full days to start with. You might find that actually four modules, four half terms of really carefully progressive music is sufficient for that. I do have a free mini course that covers the first four modules, my four musical must-haves for early years and key stage one. So if you're interested in that, pop along to doremiconnect.co.uk forward slash four and you can download the four musical must-haves for early years and key stage one. I'd love you to share your thoughts on this and whether you found it useful. So please do get in touch. You can 
browse other resources at diremiconnect.co.uk. You can email me on helen at diremiconnect.co.uk or you can find us on Facebook. And we're also kind of on Twitter and Instagram, but I'm not very good at Twitter and Instagram, as you well know. So, you know, Facebook and email are the best ways to get in touch with me and work with me. If you want more help and support in teaching music or piano using the Could I Approach, then why not become a Doremi member? It's where I keep all the best stuff, run live coaching on Zoom and also hang out in our members community group. Get all the info at doremiconnect.co.uk.